In this video, we are gonna do a word problem example in this section on stochastic processes and using trees to evaluate probabilities. So the example says, when getting a sandwich, Nisha goes to Domenico's 81% of the time and Ike's 19% of the time. At Domenico's, she'll get a root beer 60% of the time and at Ike's, she'll get it 80% of the time. If she gets a sandwich today, what is the probability that she Part A asks, gets a root beer at Domenico's. Alrighty, so let's begin by labeling some of our events here. So there are a couple places that she can go to, Domenico's and Ike's. So maybe let's let D be the event that she goes to Domenico's. And let's let I be the event that she goes to Ike's. All right, and when she's at these places, she'll sometimes get a root beer, sometimes she won't. So let's let R be the event that she gets a root beer. I'm just gonna call this RB for root beer. And let's let N be the event that she does not get a root beer, again, I'll just write RB for root beer. So we have these events. So let's think about ultimately what our goal is. So our goal is to find a certain probability. Let's see, it says, what is the probability that she gets a root beer at Domenico's? So that means she needs to go to Domenico's and, so intersection, and get a root beer. So that's and R. So we are after this probability. All right, so we are ready for a tree diagram next. So let's put where we are gonna begin. And then the two stages are the place that she, she'll go to. So I'm gonna call that deli, because these are sandwich shops. Um, and then there's the option of, does she get, what does she get to drink? Does she get a root beer or not? I'll put a question mark, because maybe she won't get a root beer. And then we can write down the outcome, the outcome, and probability. All right, so she has two options for which deli she goes to. She'll either go to Domenico's, which is D, or she'll go to Ike's, which is I. And then at each one of those places, maybe she'll get a root beer or not. So from Domenico's, I'll draw an arrow to R if she gets a root beer. And what did we call not getting root beer? I think it was N. So if I go back to the previous page, yeah, it was N for not getting a root beer. And the same thing from Ike's. Either she will decide to get a root beer or she will not get a root beer. So the outcomes are DR, DN, IR, and IN. So let's label the probabilities of each of these branches. So the question says that there's an 81% chance that she goes to Domenico's. So I will write 0.81 once I convert that percentage to a decimal. And there was a 19% chance that she goes to Ike's. And notice that these two numbers add up to one, which is good. Okay, and then the question said, at Domenico's, she'll get a root beer 60% of the time. And at Ike's, she'll get a root beer 80% of the time. So let's label those probabilities. So at Domenico's, a root beer will happen 60% of the time, so I put 0.6. And at Ike's, it's 80% of the time, so we put a 0.8. Okay, so at Domenico's, if she gets a root beer 60% of the time, that means for not getting a root beer, that would be 40% of the time, or 0.4. Similarly, at Ike's, the probability for not getting a root beer would be 0.2 because it's got to add up with a 0.8 to give us one. 20% of the time, she's not going to be getting a root beer at Ike's. So now to get my probabilities, we multiply. So this one's going to be 0.81 times 0.6. The next one's going to be 0.81 times 0.4, and then 0.19 times 0.8, and then 0.19 times 0.2. So we're multiplying the values on the branches. So if we go ahead and do this, the first value is 0.486, and then it is 0.324, 
and then 0.152, and the last one is 0.038. So if we are after the probability of D intersect R, probability that she goes to Domenico's and gets a root beer while there, this is asking about this outcome, DR, and this probability, which is 0.486. And that's our answer to part A. All right, now let's answer part B. Are the events in part A independent? So we could check this by seeing if the probability of D intersected with R is equal to, question mark, the probability of D times the probability of R. And we already know the left-hand side because we did it in part A, it's 0.486. So what's the probability of D? Probability that she goes to Domenico's. Well, that was 0.81 in the first step. And what's the probability of getting a root beer? The probability of R. Well, this one's more involved because there are two outcomes that lead to her getting a root beer. There is this outcome where she gets a root beer, and there is also this outcome where she gets a root beer. So we have to add up those probabilities. So add up this probability to this probability. So that'll give us 0.486 plus 0.152. Let me also highlight that. All right. So the right hand side here ends up being, whoops, let's go to right mode, ends up being 0.51678. So if I compare that to 486, let me put a question mark above this one because I didn't know yet if they're equal. But at this point, I definitely know that they are not equal. So that means that these two events, D and R, are not not independent since the probability of D intersected with R is not equal to the probability of D times the probability of R, unfortunately. If those probabilities had been the same, then the events would have been independent. Okay, so let's do one more part to this example. Part C asks, given that Nisha had a root beer. What's the probability, to three decimal places, that she went to Domenico's? Okay, let me put a question mark on this one. Okay, so this one is gonna be a conditional probability. I, I can tell right away because it says that given Nisha did something. So it's the probability. It's asking what's the probability that she went to Domenico's, probability that she went to Domenico's, but given that she had a root beer. So I'll say given, and then I'll just write root beer. Okay, so let's evaluate this with our formula for conditional probability. So this is gonna be the probability of the intersection of these two things. So Domenico's and getting a root beer. And then we divide it by the probability of whatever condition we're given. So the probability that she does indeed get a root beer. I'm just writing these out in terms of the words as opposed to the symbols, just so I, I remember a little bit more, like what do, what do each of the things mean? Okay, so first I need the probability that she went to Domenico's and also got a root beer. So if I zoom this out a little bit, the probability that she went to Domenico's and got a root beer was this one that we highlighted in blue. So that is gonna be 0.486. Let's highlight that in blue. And on the bottom, I need the probability that she got a root beer. That we had worked out in part B. The probability that she got a root beer, remember was 0.486 added to 0.152, because there were two outcomes where she got a root beer. Okay, so now if I zoom it in and work out what this number is, it ends up being approximately, whoops, approximately 0.07, no, sorry, sorry, I got that wrong. So 
it is 0 0.761755. And if I round this to three decimal places, um, the fourth decimal place is a seven. And that is a five or greater. So focusing on this one. And that's going to make the one round up. So this is about 0 0.762. So that is what it is rounded to three decimal places. So in the next video, we will do another word problem example.